53 years ago today, we went to the moon. Yes, we walked on the moon and we haven't been back since. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Picture this, it's July 16th, 1969. This is a Wednesday and it's 9.32 a.m. in the morning Eastern time. You've just sat down with your two homestyle Eggo waffles and orange juice, but you can't focus on your food because you have just witnessed the liftoff of Apollo 11. Over a million spectators watched this launch from Cape Kennedy, including Vice President Spiro Agnew and former President Lyndon Johnson. Now you'd spend the next few days waiting as the famous trio of astronauts made their way to the moon. Fast forward to Sunday, July 20th, 1969, this is 1.44 p.m. and guess what? We have made it to the moon. This is when the lunar module with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin aboard was undocked from the command module and the descent to the surface of the moon began. And you'll remember Michael Collins stayed aboard the command module Columbia serving as a communications link and photographing the lunar surface. 417 p.m. the lunar module touched down on the surface of the moon the eagle had landed but we'd have to wait a few hours for the big moment the grand finale this was at 10 51 p.m. Eastern time and this is when Neil Armstrong began his descent from the lunar module he took humankind's first steps on the moon, followed by Buzz Aldrin. And at 10.56, we heard the famous words. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. On the moon, astronauts carried out a planned series of experiments. This took about two hours and 15 minutes, and then they prepared to re-enter the lunar module. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. Buzz and Neil collected almost 50 pounds of lunar material to bring back to Earth. And guess what? They were on the moon's surface for over 21 hours. And they returned to Earth and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th. This was after eight days in space. And they were picked up by the USS Hornet, a World War II aircraft carrier. And guess what? I made a whole video about this. You can check this out for yourself if you are ever in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I knew that the anniversary of the moon landing was coming up and I was really excited about it. In fact, I even tried to reach out to some of the surviving Apollo astronauts for an interview. Unfortunately, that didn't work out in time, but I did talk to our favorite astronomer, Jonathan McDowell, who was alive during this time. He was nine years old and this moment still stays with him today. In fact, it's what inspired him to get so involved with space and astronomy. Since I wasn't around, what do you remember most from, from that day? Oh, wow. I re so I was nine. I remember how crappy the picture was. <laughs> I remember I remember being really excited. I remember sitting and we had the fireplace. You know, I had like a real fireplace in those days, right? The TV was next to it. Black and white TV. And you saw this flickery signal and you heard. It was hard to make out but you had the commentator explaining what was going on. The clearest memory I have is actually of the week before. And the week before I was walking home from school, being in the north of England at that time, uh, it was already getting dark, in even in July. It was like, you know, it was, it was a little bit dark on the way home from school. And I saw the moon in the sky. And I clearly remember thinking, next week, for the first time, human beings are gonna be walking on another world and having my mind be totally blown by that idea that it was so science fiction at the time and it was really gonna happen. This, like, we're really gonna do this thing, <laughs> you know? That's something that people have talked about for centuries in a way and, and, and it was actually happening. So I, I just remember that feeling of awe that it hasn't really gone away. <laughs> Now it's been over 50 years since we've been to the moon. I asked Jonathan his thoughts as he's surprised that we haven't been back since. He says, no. Apollo war would not have happened without the Cold War. You know, you sometimes hear this simplistic thing that it was just done to beat the Russians in the Cold War. And I think that 
simplify oversimplifies the number of different groups that had to come together to make it happen. Right. Yes, politicians were interested for political reasons. The space engineers pushed it to them because they were they wanted to you know they had the vision of, of a multi-planetary species if you like and, right. and and it you know that wouldn't have been on the table for the politicians if it hadn't been for that other group and so so i think there were many different desires that came together to make apollo happen why haven't we consolidated that since the continuing large cost of, of launch but also just the the hardening of the arteries of NASA as an agency. You know, the bureaucracy just uh, got captured by, you know, keeping the jobs going to the right states and not what do we actually need to get done. There was a shift in the starting in the 90s that put the idea of these sort of more manifest destiny kind of ideas back on the table, right? The idea of multi-planetary species that Elon uh, advocates, and as do I, the idea that the purpose of human spaceflight is not to do science, it's to explore and to settle. You know, it was too embarrassing in the 1980s to mm -hmm. say, you actually, you, you weren't doing this for science, you were doing this for a future in which humans settled the solar system. Right, right. Right, that was not okay to say back then. And now it's okay to say that. Right. And that's why, and that's why we now have, let's go back and, and do these, these grand things. Now, of course, we got stuck with the SLS rocket, which in my opinion is not the right way to go about it and is gonna doom the human lunar exploration program, maybe not cancellation, but but sputtering along at a not really sustainable way due to the costs. Uh, and maybe eventually, if Starship works, a Starship version two or version three might be at the point where, you know, something more sustainable in terms of deep space exploration could happen. Um, so we're still, you know, it's an expensive operation and, and, uh, the country is not willing to spend that amount of money on doing what really needs to be done. And the system for actually making it happen is somewhat corrupted by all the various aerospace companies needing their bit and the various senators needing their bit in their states and, and things like that. And so it's not going as smoothly as you'd like. Um, but at least, at least the vision is there again now. Right. Which it really wasn't in the 80s. It really was not okay to even talk about it. Much as in 1970, we were all told, we'll be on Mars by 1980. That was, that was the story back then. Um, realistically, it's actually not that surprising it's taken this this long to go back. Yeah. And, and the idea is now people have, have determined that we shouldn't just go back for a plant the flag exercise, we should go back to stay. And here's a fun extra for you. Buzz Aldrin has announced that he's going to auction off some of his personal items, including the jacket that he wore during the moon landing. Now, there will be several items and historic artifacts for auction, but this jacket is the only space flown garment from Apollo 11 that is still in private hands. And this jacket is expected to attract bids of up to $2 million, according to the event organizer Sotheby's. It was made from a then newly developed fireproof material known as beta cloth. The jacket is emblazoned with Aldrin's name and the NASA logo. So what about the jackets from Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins? Well, those are already on display at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. Now, Buzz is quoted saying, after deep consideration, the time felt right to share these items with the world, which for many are symbols of a historical moment, but for me have always remained personal mementos of a life dedicated to science and exploration. I hope that this collection offers some insight into what it has been like to be Buzz Aldrin. And this sale, which Sotheby's has titled Buzz Aldrin American Icon, will take place on July 26th. This is, of course, less than a week after the moon landing's 53rd anniversary. Now, we know that we have an effort to go back to the moon already underway, but I want to know from you guys, what year do we realistically think 
that that's gonna happen? Let me know in the comments below.